Come on, tell him now. Come on, tell him. Give him a good, open your mouth, give him a good praise out of your mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, there it is. Come on, give him a good praise out of your mouth. in control. You have to give him control. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. And we bless you. We, for, we thank you for what you're doing right now. We thank you for the word now. We thank you for what we have in you right now. We thank you that we are delivered now and we set free now and we're overcomers now in you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for this word. the word of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O oh Lord my strength and my redeemer and they all said amen, amen. come on give them another good praise and put your hands together <laughs> Today we want to talk from the subject of, it's a one word title to the message today, engaged, engaged. And I'm not going to talk about engaged to be married, engaged, engaged. The survival of the local church, and this is what this is. This is a local church. Uh, this particular location of the church that's at 4660 uh, uh, military. And the survival of this local church is based on its engagement. On its engagement. For business, there is a business plan. For information technology, otherwise known as IT, there are programs and even languages that guide operations. For nurses, there is the patient care plan. I think they still call them that. Or either, thank you, Shirley Tut RN, treatment plan. Treatment plans. For the surgeon, there is a surgical procedure based on what needs to be done. Because they don't use the same instruments for everything. 
Everything has a set of instruments that operates a, 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 a pathway to that particular surgery. I thank God for that. Amen. For the pilot, there is a flight plan. For church, there is a mission statement, also called a commission. It's, it's, it's a mission with a command. Here is a, a simple definition of engaged. Read it with me. Busy, occupied, absorbed with. Let's say it again. Busy, occupied, absorbed with. That's what it means to be engaged. The action word, <laughs> drag on out of here. <laughs> the action word is the, 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 the most Poignant action word of all of that is busy. You cannot be busy unengaged. Everything you're busy in, you're engaged in. Amen? And as you're busy with it, you are occupying and you are absorbed with it. When I watch young people engaged in their, their little handheld games, they, 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 they are so occupied in it. I watched my grandson. He's so occupied with it until, and so absorbed with it, till I can call his name and he doesn't even hear me. I have to scream louder than the, than the, than the, 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 the game is playing in his head. So I can't call him from afar. I have to get up in his ear and say, Lou. And then he might answer me and say, yes, Poppy. I, I, I got in. But he was so absorbed, he was so engaged until nothing else around him mattered. Again, engage means to be fully absorbed, having your full attention. Don't, don't mind her. She, she's, she's just being a baby, a, a, a distraction. Uh, it means having your full attention. Full attention. To be involved. To be involved. Why are you preaching this today, Pastor? Because we need to improve our level of engagement all over this church. Level of engagement. So as we move into the lesson, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, we find Jesus speaking another parable. What is a parable? It is an earthly story with spiritual and or kingdom meaning. So it has kingdom meaning, but it's used in, 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 in earthly ways to describe it. But it's really talking about something else that's greater. Amen? And so in this 19th chapter of St. Luke, I, I call it the parable of the engaged. The, the parable of the engaged, it starts with, with, with verse 12, moving to 13, and, and here is that, that reading. Therefore he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. To receive for himself what? And to what? A certain nobleman. Get the similarities in story. What is he talking about? A certain nobleman went to receive a kingdom and return. 
All right? You still with me? So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, do business till I come. In other words, Jesus is saying, the master told those ten servants, get engaged. Do business till I come. But he gave them something to work with. You don't need anything to work with if you're not going to do anything with it. But that's not the case. You've been given something to work with. Wow. Wow. Now the old King James uh, version says, occupy till I come. You see the similarities? Occupy. It, now, now, that doesn't mean take up space. It means do business. Do business till I come. Here, continuing the reading, 10 servants were given an equal amount of money worth about three months of wages for a working man. That's pretty good. Isn't it good to think that God might want to give you something that you don't have to live from check to check? <laughs> Does that make sense? Somebody just said, Lord, give me a minus. Whatever a minus is in today's time, I want that. Three months in advance. Just, 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 just. Come on. I need more than that. But for right now, that'll help me stay hopeful <laughs> about the rest. <laughs> so y'all get crazy. Y'all want all of it at one time, but else he didn't do it. What about just getting a little breakthrough to let you know the rest is on the way? Amen. The letter that the check is coming makes you happy too. Come on. Amen. All right. Just got to, we got to count the blessings as we go. Just, just count it all up. Count it all up. Amen. Worth about three months of wages for a working man. God distributes some gifts differently according to his own pleasure. Others are universally given to every believer, such as the gospel. The gospel in this case is your minus, and everyone was given the same amount, the same information to share. The ten minus... Each man didn't get 10. The 10 men got one minus a piece. So they all left the gate equally. Because we have a tendency to think that God thinks more of somebody across the aisle than he does us. But he, he, he's good. He gives us all the, the same measure. So everybody got the same. All 10 got the same one minus. And we're told to do business. Then Luke 19 and 14. In this story, there is a set of people. Now, here is the master getting his people engaged to do business. But as usual, when you need to be doing something that, that's positive and doing something that's busy, doing something that you're absorbed in for the kingdom, there's always a group of people that don't want to do anything. And they always try to talk you out of doing something. Yeah. Just because I don't feel like doing it. So they, they level the playing field based on their need of not wanting to do anything. And they'll go around asking, you don't feel it either, do you? You don't feel it either, do you? You ought to holler back, no, I'm not tired. It's about being engaged. Amen. So the scripture jumps in and tells us in Luke 19 and 14, but his citizens hated him. Whose citizens? The, the, the master's 
citizens that were in his sphere of influence that he had governance over, he was in charge of. The citizens, not the servants, hated him. That group of folk that's always not wanting to do nothing. So they hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man reign over us. We will not have this man reign over us. They, they went after the delegation and said, you know what? I don't care if y'all do like him. We, we, we won't have this man reign over us. We don't want him to make us do business. We don't want to occupy till he comes back. That's why you can't always share your plans with everybody. Because they can't see where you're seeing and they don't know what the Lord told you and they don't know where you're going. So they they don't they 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 unengaged. So because they unengaged, they cannot get busy. And this world is so established that it keeps you so unengaged and stuff. Everything is quick and fast and in a hurry. You can't even get engaged in anything. You have, that, that's why a, 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 a big thing that's going is attention deficit disorder. And I'm not just talking about kids. I'm talking about with, with society in general. We have attention deficit disorder. We, we move by everything that's shiny. Oh, shiny and we gone. Oh, this looks good, and we gone. Oh, this is singing at this church. They're having this celebrity this Sunday, and we're gone. And we forget that there is a rule of engagement that I must be faithful where I am. Oh, boy, that said a lot right quick, didn't it? Because we have attention deficit, we, we're not absorbed into, and to the point that we can't see stuff follow through and finish because we aren't engaged. We get bored in the middle. How many of you have a work day that a part of that work day is where the boredom sets in? I used to work midnights. I started at 11.30, got off at 7.30 in the morning. But here's the funny part. At 11.30, I was okay because I was wrestling with the idea that I had to be there at that time of night. By, by, by 1.30, I was still okay. 2.30, 3, by 3.30, I, 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 some was sitting in. By, by, by 4.30, I was blinking. <laughs> Trying to stay in gay. You, you, you don't know that unless you work midnight, sir. Do, do y'all know, anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you know that that 4 to 5.30 is a bewitching hour? That's the time when you're more apt to get fired. Because you're more apt to get called asleep. All right, all right, I'm just going to back up a little. Are, are y'all out there? Does this make any sense? Amen. And so, 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 you have to stay attentive. You have to stay on it. Uh, we, we, but they, they, they hated him because he had given them something to do. You can't hate your pastor for giving you something to do. I'm going to give you something to do. There are no pew members in here. If you want to be a pew member, then I'm going to get rid of the pews. Then you'll be a standing member. You'll be a member in good standing. Uh -huh. Oh, that's, oh boy, I don't know where that came from. That, that's pretty good, right? Somebody write that down. Put that in my box. Do you understand what I'm saying? You ought to be up a bit. There's not a person in this house that ought not be busy doing something. You ought not be unengaged. Because you were given something to work with, and the master said, keep doing it until I come back to check on your progress. The verse was speaking about opposition, and that comes. Opposition comes, but you have to stay on track. 
You got a mission, stay on it. Amen. Because opposition will come. It's almost par for the course that if you set your mind and your heart to do something in the kingdom, that opposition going to show up. That's how you know you're doing it right. But if you don't catch no trouble, that ain't nothing. Because opposition going to come. How many of you know I'm right about that? On your best day, you say, I'm trying to do it right, and all hell break loose. And somebody said, I'm just not going to do it right. It didn't, then the hell not going to break. you still going to catch hell. Because it's part of what happens. It's saying catch hell cussing in churches. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> From now on, I'll just say H-E, two hockey pucks, yeah, hockey sticks. I don't know, whatever. Y- y'all know. It's getting regular with me here. Luke 19, 15 through 19 says this. And here comes accountability time. Somebody say accountability. accountability. You're going to have to account for what God has given you to work with. Yes. And it's not for what you think. You think he, he, he going to make you accountable for your job. No, no. He going to make you accountable for the mission he gave you. And every one of you, he's given a mission. Everyone under the sound of my voice, he's giving you something to do other than what you just want to do all the time. And that something to do is your passion. You, it, that could be something to do that he gave you. But sometimes... The things for kingdom don't line up with what our something to do is. And we get into something to do so hard that we never do anything for the kingdom. Well, you, as a Christian, you're off balance. You cannot be a Christian and not do kingdom works. I love Jesus. What do you do for Jesus? Well... I go to church, eh, wrong answer. The mission field really starts when you leave these doors. That's when it starts. Luke 19, 15 through 19, here comes the accountability. The first two, two servants give account to their master. There's only three that's going to give accountability. But, but in it, we get to, 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 to the gist of the lesson. And so it was that when he returned, to, who, who returned? Master. All right, the master. Having received the kingdom. Ooh. The master already has the reward with him. The reward is the kingdom. And he just gave you something to work with until he come bring the kingdom and match with it. So what you're doing is matching him as it is on earth as it is in. Come on, come on, come on. That's why you must do the works of Christ in the earth. Because when he get back, he's going to match you. And it's going to be a match point. It's going to be a checkmate. And we think it's insignificant. It's not. God is connected. Everything he does is, is, is lining up with something else. Is lining up with something else. Is lining up with something. And when you look around, you see the complete picture. Oh, that was your plan. God has a plan. You are part of the plan. He didn't send Jesus to save you so you could just be goofy saved. I'm just saved. I'm just saved. But what do you do? Well, I've given you a minus. I've given you the gospel. Work with that. Tell them I'm coming. So when I show up, it'll be a match point. They said he was coming. And here he is. 
And here he is. Match point. There's a plan. You were saved for a plan. And whether you believe it or not, it, it, you might think it was just for you, but it was to, for God's glory. That accident happened to you and didn't kill you, but it was for God's glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you will rise up and say, God did that. That time of dryness that you went through and you didn't think you would ever get out of, and then you finally found an oasis, or an oasis, and you got a breakthrough. That was God's doing, and you celebrated in that moment, but it was for his glory. Come on, come on. You don't understand that, that every time you get up, the devil has to get back because you're giving glory to God. Yeah. And sometimes it's unstoppable based on the fact that so much came to place to stop you from moving, and you still moved anyway. You still overcome anyway. What they said you couldn't get, you got it anyway. Don't you know the devil don't like that? But it's for God's glory. God said, yeah, yeah, give it to me. I did that. You were raised for his glory. Come on. Anybody know I'm talking right in this house? You've been through some changes, and you didn't think you was coming out of it. And on the other side of it, you know it was the Lord that did it. He helped you find lost stuff. He restored stuff to you. He stopped them from taking your job. And when they tried, he raised you back up and sent you back to it. And, and he, he made it so good that they couldn't operate until you got back. It was for God's glory. So that somewhere in this place, you can say, and God did that. Come on, come on, come on. Don't you take no credit. You have to jump up and say, God, you did that. Because his handprint is all over it. That's why you can't look to men. You have to look to God. God did it. Because he's coming back, but he wants you to be accountable. And you don't think you need to be accountable. Somebody 41 years old died the other day. What don't you think you need to be accountable over? But beyond that, his young daughter in her teens. Don't play. Keep waiting and playing. As if time is on your side. It's not. I got to get myself together. If you could do that, Jesus wouldn't have need to have come. What you getting together? Just make up your mind. Well, I know that's rough today. Just, come on, just make up your mind. Don't get crazy about it. You know what you need. I know when I need to go to the doctor. I still have to make up my mind to go. So y'all need to make up your mind to go to the doctor. Because I know he's going to poke and prod and test and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, I still have to go. But the benefit is finding out what I need. So, 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 so you need to just make up your mind because there's something on the other side of a made up mind. Until you rest in the fact that, 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 that I'm going to do it for Jesus. And get set there and dig your heels in and say, I'm not going to be moved from that. Occupy. Let me, let me, let me. Oh, my God. And so it was when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him. That he might know how much every man had gained by trading. What did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with it? Did, okay, I'm, I don't want to run ahead of my story. Did, what did you do with it? My God. Then came the first saying, Master. Your minus has earned 10 minus. And he said to him, well done. Good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, but you brought back much. Oh God. 
He only gave him a little. But he gave everybody the same look. He gave Dora the same little. He gave to Rose, to Helene, to Lynn. He gave everybody that same little. But little is much in the hand of God. In, in, in God's little is, is, is a genetic code called multiplication. And, 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 and if you throw it in somewhere, it's going to produce more. But it's got to get somewhere else to produce. It said he traded. That means he took what he had, he occupied, he went somewhere, and he did business and threw it in, and he brought back ten. And the Lord rewarded him by saying, well done. Not, not only are you just a good servant, but you faithful. Faithful to what? To use what I gave you to make gain. God wants 10 Pastor Marcy's. He wants 10 LaRosses. He even wants 10 Lou. God, oh God. Are y'all getting this today? Is it? Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? He wants you to produce. He wants some more of you to be walking in the earth because you made that one that he, he, he calls you to throw in in the way of, 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 of money. To, could it be God said, I want you to use what I gave you to buy somebody into the kingdom of God? To get them in. And you can't get to them unless you get up on them. However, he said, well done. He said, you, you, you were faithful in a very little. He said, so, 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 I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you authority over ten cities. Wow. See, you can't move to the next place of height until you prove faithful on a, this level. And when you prove that you can produce here, then God says, see, when you work good, God doesn't give you vacation. He gives you more work. <laughs> oh, you, you, you don't like to hear that. No, no. Ask Bishop Thomas J. when he could take his whole church in the station wagon with him after service. He said they shout together, pray together, then they get in his station wagon, they go all eat together. Now he's got 25,000 folks. He said he can't do that now because he was faithful with them and God kept bumping them up to different levels. And so, so now, you know, you know, he's got multiplication all over the place. But in that multiplication comes tribulation too. You know what the tribulation is? It's contained in more work. I got a hundred of them just don't want to do nothing. I got 500. Half the choir won't act right. 200 on the earth board, 75 of them cutting up. When multiplication comes work. But the, here's, the, here's the truth. Whom he called, he qualified. He fits you for the task. Anybody in those places are fitted for the task. Yeah. Come on, come. So don't damn get more. I don't want more work. Don't say that. Because the most blessed thing you can get and have gotten is work. Yeah. Now you need to work in the kingdom. Come on. After Adam fell short, he didn't let him starve. The first thing he gave him was something to cover up his nakedness. And then he said, hey, bro. <laughs> From now on, you're going to work it this way. It used to be easy. Now you're going to sweat a little. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody all over this room say, thank you, Lord, for work. Don't you damn work. 
because you need to work. The Bible said, man, that won't work. You just are hungry. <laughs> what y'all feeding people for like that? That, that, that won't work. I, I'm sick of this culture that's taking care of people that they decide they don't want to work. So you get with somebody that does work. Oh, I'm sorry. That's... Y'all tell bro, you, sister, you don't want to work? You're going to be a hungry. <laughs> Are y'all out there? Is this some plain talk? Just, just plain. And the second came saying, still reading out of that same one, Master, your minus has earned five minus. Likewise, he said to him, you also uh, be over five cities. Now, let me go back and explain and unpack. When the master returned, he dealt the first one. So he first wanted to know how faithful his servant had been in his, in his absence. See, see, everybody works good when the boss is with them. How many of y'all know when your supervisor is on your flow? In your building. Some of y'all get spiritual and you can discern his presence <laughs> in the next cubicle. At that time, everybody working. <laughs> but with God, he wants to know what you'll do when he's not looking over your shoulder. It's just a trust system. I'm trusting you to be faithful while I'm gone. Ooh. So the man made 10. He, he multiplied. That was the equivalent of a thousand percent. A thousand percent. Have authority. A thousand percent. And then I, I, I kept saying, how a thousand percent? You, you made that much off of one. And so I had to look up the formula for, for percentages. Percentage increase formula is percentage increase equals increase divided by original number times a hundred. And it got to a thousand. His 10 was 1,000%. And so the next guy's five became 500%. How many of you know a 1,000% return and a 500% return on a stock will give you more than three months' wages? Come on. It'll bring return. Everything related to God is designed to bring return. He don't give anything with, to you just to level you out. Everything he sends is designed to bump you up a little bit. That's why you can't beat him giving. You can hold back if you want to, but you'll never beat him giving. Because you may think it's just going to be this way and just stop asking and expecting God just to meet the need. I've gotten greedy. I expect a little more from you than just a need met. Because I know that's not how you operate. One scripture says, if you sow the wind, you will inherit a whirlwind. There's operation and, and multiplication in everything God does. He, he, he just won't send it back. That's why the, 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 the woman with the, with the little bit of oil, he, he just didn't send her one more little bottle of oil. That's how we think. 
I gave you a, a, a shirt. Not, not, now, give me one. That's how, 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 how there's an old word that, that, that people used to say, that's how tainanchi you are, you know. Stingy. You, you giving. I don't like tainanchi nothing. I don't like stingy. I don't even like folk to serve me and give me a stingy portion. I keep standing there. Have you ever seen folks serve you? It's somebody else's food and they give you just a small, they find the littlest wing, you know. <laughs> That's a mentality. They don't understand that God is about to pile up. He wants you to be satisfied with more than, more than, Let's get to the last one. Luke 19, 20 through 26. The third servant gives account to his master. Then another came saying, Master, here is your minor, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. <laughs> See, I knew when you got here, you'd already have it. Uh-oh, he messed up. Put away in a handkerchief. That's what non-givers do. They put it away in a handkerchief. As if your handkerchief can't find you out. What's in that handkerchief will testify about your faithfulness. Ooh. What you don't give will testify about your faithfulness. Your faith to God. How full of faith you are in to God based on what he's given to you. But maybe you like verse 14. I can't stand your master. So you decide to put it in a handkerchief. I'll keep it for myself. I don't think it's necessary that I have to tithe. I don't have to give. I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll get, okay. We'll see how that works out. And here's the dupe. Sometime in the meantime, we get grace and keep getting blessed and stuff still keeps happening. But don't you get crazy because you ain't through living, I don't think. You get happy with that thing. Satan got happy day one of Jesus' death. He threw a banquet day two. But day three, the party was over. Oh, it was over. In some cases, don't shout too early. <laughs> Because the dead man ain't got up yet. Because we don't think it comes home to roost. It does. Wow, 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 wow. He said, he, now this is excuse. For I feared you because you are an austere man. That means I'm scared of you. And I know you didn't want me to lose your money. Well, he gave it to you knowing that if you applied the right formula of faith to it, it was going to grow. When God gives you something, he doesn't give it to you nervously. He's not nervous about what he gave you. Ooh. He, then the man went on to say, you collect what you did not deposit. Slapping him real good. And reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was the man I was. <laughs> Collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? That at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the miner from him. Open that handkerchief up. Get it out. 
Open it up. You the servant, but you're not the servant. You're my wife, but not for this story's sake. This is me holding the mic. I knew you were a rough man, so I took it and I put it in here. And oh, but that's not what I told you to do. I told you to occupy. Put it somewhere till it will start multiplying. <laughs> till it start making something. Till it start producing. Oh, oh, you got to get this lesson. Yeah. And he said, since you don't know what to do with it, give it back. Give it back. Be careful because you don't know what he's going to ask back. Don't, don't live nervously. Ooh, what can he ask for back? Don't, don't think about it too long. You'll get nervous. Give it to him. Give it to him. Well, I only had one. This is not a magic trick. I don't care how many times I shake this. Uh oh, I still don't have nothing. Now you see it? Are y'all out there? Is this making sense to anybody? So I'd rather have this that I put in that so I can keep making more this. I keep going down in here and then when he come back, he say, what did you do? What did you have? Well, 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 first of all, it, it, it ain't in the handkerchief. See, the handkerchief is your defiance. The handkerchief is your disobedience. The handkerchief is your willfulness to say, I don't like the master. Your handkerchief is to hide out. <laughs> so when you come back, what you got, boy? <laughs> what you got? <laughs> like the little kids say when they go to the penny store, candy store, I only got these many. But I have some return. God wants an engaged church that is bringing back return in every way. You involved because you love it. You involved because you're passionate. Don't be a part of nothing that you can't be passionate enough to give into, to serve into, and to worship into. And watch the kingdom of God come because he's going to do a checkpoint. What did you do with what I gave? Blessings to you today. Hey, go check out that. Wake up. Come off of yourself and obey God. Obey him. Obey the Lord. <laughs> You're part of this church. You should be a giver. You should be a giver. There's no way a whole year could go by and you don't give nothing to a place you call your church. That you don't serve no time.
Because God is looking. That's not a threat. The truth is, you don't have to. If you don't want to. But I want you to get engaged. Take somebody by the hand and tell them, get engaged. Get engaged. You just held the hand of somebody you said earlier you loved. Get engaged. Get engaged. And watch God bring return. He's about multiplication. I'm standing here as a witness and I can tell you. He'll return it to you. At the oddest time when you're not even looking for it. I've been broken. Somebody just walked up to me and said, huh, I was thinking about you today. Or they send me a message that we were thinking about you today. We love you today. And I just want you to know that you've been beneficial to my life. Get engaged. There's a great love that the world don't know about it. It's only in this place. It's knowing Jesus. So I know you want to go to sleep and you want to do all that kind of stuff. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Get engaged. Get engaged. Don't pretend like you want to be and you're not. Get engaged. Don't hold out with people so you stand back and say, I'll show them. Notice it wasn't their disposition that Jesus, that the master even addressed in giving them the minders. He didn't care what their attitude was. He said, this is my stuff. I want you to operate with my stuff. Even with all your shortcomings. He don't care about that. He said, can I trust what I gave you? That it'll work. over the room, lift up your hand and begin to worship God. I feel his presence. Mm. Come open your mouth and worship him. As we get prepared to go to the Lord's table. I want to send this church into a oneness as never before. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That you hover over us. You send your word out to perform it.